Hi, I'm Tivega, and this, this is not ELT TV, this is Glacis Teaching World. Hi, teachers. This is Glacy from Brazil. Welcome to my teaching world. I have a question for you. Are your students afraid to speak English? If you're not a native, um, how was your experience as a student? I usually share my experience with the students to encourage them. When I was a student of English, I was so scared, so afraid to speak English. I always thought someone was judging me and that my mistakes were going to make me look stupid. Most of our students have that devil's voice in their head saying, Do not open your mouth. You're going to sound stupid. To be honest, I don't know if that's a cultural thing or if all students from all over the world have this fear. As teachers and educators, we have to help them and tell them that we learn from our mistakes and that in order to be fluent, we have to speak and overcome this fear. So my dear teacher, if you have these kind of students, if you've been through this before, do not worry, you are not alone. So make your students understand that they are not alone and that you are there to help them. Well, today in my teaching world, I have a very special guest who is going to give you some tips on how to help these students who are so afraid to speak English. My special guest is a teacher, a teacher trainer and material designer based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He also holds a postgraduate degree in media education and he has been a teacher for over 14 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for T. Vega. Today, Glace invited me to talk to you about what we teachers can do to help the students who are afraid of speaking. Students who are not confident, students who struggle to speak and sometimes even refuse to speak in class. I'm sure everyone has had a student like that before, right? So, here I have five tips for you to help your students. Practice. Practice does make perfect. And if you want to help your students to succeed in a particular context or a communicative situation, make sure you provide them with lots of opportunities to practice. But remember, it's not so simple. It's vital that you give students feedback on their performance so they know exactly what their strengths are and also the, the areas that need improvement. Spot the problem. Sometimes our students don't have the necessary grammar or vocabulary to perform tasks, and it's our job to identify what they need and provide them with that. For instance, we cannot just assume students are going to talk about their weekend if we haven't taught them the past simple or if we haven't reinforced enough how it works. Slow down. Sometimes we teachers get too anxious and we transfer that anxiety to our students. For instance, um, let me ask you a question. What is your favorite action movie? <laughs> you see, you probably needed some time to think. Nobody wants to say the very first thing that comes to their mind without thinking. So remember to give students appropriate thinking time. My last tip would be to work on listening skills. And here I'm not talking just about listening for gist and detail. We usually do that quite a lot. I'm also talking about pronunciation and students being aware that there are phonological processes and that sometimes words change and uh, sounds are a little different and things in a sentence happen. It's important to highlight that they don't need to be able to produce those. They need to be able to identify those and that is going to make all the difference. Did you like this video? I hope you did. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to Glaze's channel. My channel is going to be in the description box, so don't forget to subscribe too. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Tivega, thank you very much for these wonderful tips. And teacher, don't forget you can be amazing and your students are going to be as amazing as you are, okay? 
Bye-bye. See you on my next video.